So uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good morning for me. Uh, but thank you all for uh, letting me take a few moments of your time to share with you uh, a little message about uh, law meets. Uh, and thank you particularly to John Cummins for the invitation. Um, for the, to make this technology a little simpler, um, I thought I'd just record this presentation and then we can have a chat uh, by a conference call about it with any, for any questions. Uh, so here I go. We'll make it quick. Uh, Law Meets is basically a moot court or a mock trial experience, an intra-scholastic competition for law students who are interested in a transactional practice rather than in a litigation or dispute resolution practice. Uh, it's basically a uh, moot court for deal lawyers. That's its idea. Uh, and you can learn more about it by going to our website at lawmeets.com. The idea for Law Meets uh, stems from a conversation I had about six years ago with some of my students who came up to me and asked, you know, uh, hey, all of our friends have these chances to travel all over the country, if not the world, to do uh, moot court. Uh, but uh, those moot courts seem to all be about some kind of subject that I don't really care about. Isn't there something out there for us who want to be uh, transactional lawyers? And I said, well, of course there must be. Let's go find it. And if there is, I'd be happy to sponsor a team. And so the students looked and looked and looked and looked. They actually came back with a suggestion that we should go to Vienna for a, uh, uh, a negotiation competition, uh, Vienna, Austria. Uh, and I was all in favor of that, but the dean said no, and pointed out very correctly that even that competition, while called a negotiation competition, was about a dispute. It was a commercial arbitration uh, competition. And so uh, not finding something, we decided to build our own. Uh, in our first year in 2010, we attracted, uh, I think it's uh, 12 teams to the competition, including some very elite schools, as well as some of our local uh, schools in the Philadelphia area. Uh, the second year we ran it again uh, after there was a little bit of press and it grew to 24 teams. Uh, we then decided to start offering the competition at different regions around the country. So we had separate law schools, uh, five of them in this case, uh, do it uh, on the same day. Uh, and obviously the number of teams grew substantially. Uh, it grew again the following year to six uh, regions, and then finally to uh, uh, six again, then to seven this past year. So I'm doing it on two pages, you can see. Uh, and we're going to have eight uh, regions um, in 2016. And so obviously, tremendous demand for this kind of experience among uh, law students. Uh, last year, uh, uh, we these were the schools that hosted um, uh, the regional rounds, and you can see uh, your buddies at University of Missouri, Kansas City are on the list. Um, and ultimately, uh, the winners of the regional rounds, so two teams from each region, were sent to the finals, which we hosted in New York City at Sullivan and Cromwell's offices. Um, and that was a special treat, of course, uh, for the students. We also started a few years ago an IP version. So this is a transactional uh, competition, but focused on intellectual property law. It's usually some kind of licensing deal. Um, it started small, but has now grown to uh, an East Coast, West Coast competition. And this year we're adding a Chicago uh, region. So there'll be three regional rounds of the IP law meet. Again, very similar to the transactional law meet, but just with an IP focus. Uh, we are working on adding a, a fourth competition because we also have a bankruptcy one um, that is focused, but the fourth one is going to be focused on venture capital and startup law uh, type subject matter. Uh, the transactional law meet has gotten a lot of press and a lot of positive reviews uh, from you know outside observers, but most particularly we're proud of the constant refrain we hear from both the judges, the uh, professors, advisors, and then most in particular the students uh, about their experience. Uh, the refrain is, I wish I had such a thing in law school from the practitioners and from the students. This was the best learning experience I've had in law school, if not in any school. Uh, that is often a, a quote we get in our uh, surveys. Uh, so we're quite happy with the process. Uh, this is how it actually works. Um, this is a typical calendar from, this is from last year. Uh, our regional rounds start by publishing the problem, the case statement, if you will. Uh, it is a very factually rich um, uh, situation that the students are presented with. Um, 
They then are offered the opportunity to have a client conference call. This is a call where all of the teams representing one of the parties in the transaction get on the phone with someone who is role playing the client and they are allowed to ask questions of the client just like lawyers would ask questions of their client in, pre in, in preparing for uh, drafting and negotiating a deal. Uh, two sets of calls, one for each side, uh, occur on that day. Then they are required to submit drafts of a document or part of a document as part of uh, the impending negotiations, just like they would in real life. Finally, uh, since now they are possessing the draft from the other side, they now have questions to refine their position with the client, so they're given a second client conference call opportunity. Again, all the teams from one side talk to the client about what the issues are and what they are seeing in the other side's drafts. This then leads to uh, the markups. Uh, each team it marks up an opposing team's um, uh, proposed draft, again, just like they would in real life. And all of this is the lead up to the actual negotiations, which occur face to face uh, during um, the regional law meets. And again, as I mentioned in the US, because we have so many regions, now up to eight, we then have a national round, uh, which uh, the winning buyer and winning seller side, or whichever, uh, the, whatever the characterization is of the two sides of the transaction, if the winning team of, from representing each of those sides from each region, so in this case now a total of 16 teams, uh, will advance to the national rounds. And again, we repeat the same um, um, uh, pattern of interaction again as we had in the regional rounds, Again, a conference call with the client. Again, the opportunity to submit a draft document, to have a second call with the client once that draft is in hand, and finally to submit a markup, all in anticipation of the national uh, set rounds of negotiations. Okay. Um, at those negotiations, this is pretty much what the schedule looks like. It's a single day. Uh, there it starts with some uh, you know, orientation but then quickly leads to the two rounds of um, negotiations. So, and in, I'll should break down what those rounds consist of in a second. And then finally, once uh, the sort of semi-finalist teams are determined based on those two rounds, and I can go into how we do that and how scoring works on Q&A, uh, but then the semi-final rounds occur. And then finally, we have a, uh, our uh, final session where we ask uh, a subset of the judges from the day to come and give a demonstration of how they would have addressed at least some aspect of the day's discussions, and then we announce the winners. And um, that's the end of the day, usually uh, followed by a, uh, a nice uh, party. Um, the rounds themselves look like this. We give an initial allotment to the two teams to have their discussions. The judges are in the room, but they're told they're, they should say nothing, uh, that their job there is to simply evaluate what they see the teams doing. But when that is over, the 50 minutes, uh, the judges now uh, have a real job to do. We ask them to give, the in, over the next 15 minutes, real feedback to each of the teams separately. Uh, our mission, our, 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 our uh, exhortation to them is to do everything they can in those 15 minutes to make the team better the next time around. This is a real teaching experience. Uh, it, time and time again, we hear from teams that this is their favorite part of the day. And then finally, we give the judges a few moments to uh, score. Um, why did we do this? Well, uh, there's been a lot of press about uh, the failure of legal education to prepare practice-ready lawyers, particularly in the transactional side of things. Uh, this was an article a few years ago from the New York Times. Uh, this is actually a picture taken from um, a uh, training session based on the Lawme model that we do at um, Drinker Biddle in Philadelphia. Um, but uh, our, even our, uh, our trade association, uh, our bar uh, organization, is exhorting law schools to do better. Uh, and so uh, we think of Law Meets as a very direct response to the huge failure, the huge gap in legal education between uh, practice and theory that especially plagues um, future uh, transactional lawyers. Uh, you know, I, uh, this is one of my favorite pictures. I think it captures very well how uh, one 
has traditionally and one, how one still best learns how to become an excellent transactional lawyer. And the challenge, of course, is how do you rec recreate this kind of apprenticeship model of learning in a law school setting? Um, and I think Law Meets is one response uh, to that difficulty. So uh, I assume the interest in the subject might be because there's a might be an appetite to do a European uh, version of the Law Meet program. Um, if that is true, what would it entail? Well, these are the three things we would need, at least if um, we were to simply do it as an extension of what we do already in the U.S., and I see no reason why we shouldn't be able to do that. Uh, we would need to f identify a host school. Um, ideally, this is a responsibility that would uh, circulate around different schools year after year. That's a very successful model we have here in the States. But in any event, uh, we would need a school that is willing to provide the space uh, and the logistics around um, um, host hosting a regional round. The most difficult challenge for that school will be the third item, which is to make sure that we have sufficient judges. And so we would need a school that feels confident that it can reach out into the community and find 10 to 12 senior um, transactional lawyers who would be willing to dedicate a day of their lives to uh, this process. And frankly, it's not just the day of judging, but there's a fair amount of preparatory work. So you need people who are committed to this uh, process. And then as a group, uh, you would need to be confident that you could attract at least 10 I would say at a minimum eight, but ideally 10 to 12 teams uh, to your first uh, uh, competition. But if those three things can be done, there I see no reason why we couldn't add a European regional to our regional rounds, and then we can talk about how we would, might include the champions, if you will, of the European rounds in some kind of international or uh, global uh, set of finals. Maybe we could do that uh, through technology. Uh, thank you very much. That's uh, my quick overview. My name is Carl Okamoto. Um, I'm at Drexel University in Philadelphia, the Thomas R. Klein School of Law. KO54 at drexel.edu is my um, uh, email, and I'm more than happy to follow up with anyone who might be interested uh, about this. Uh, and I think now uh, might be a good time to open up a, uh, a short dialogue if you have any questions. Thank you so much.